repeated. No. <laughs> okay, here we go, Brian. We're glad y'all are joining us to study with us this evening. We thank you for joining online. We thank you for your time. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to prepare us as we study together tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for your grace and your mercy, for your tremendous love to us. We thank you, O oh Lord, that we can trust you to reveal yourself through your word. And Father, that your word will prepare us for the work set before us. As we share together, Lord, we, we see a tremendous need to plead for your strength as we fight the uncertainties surrounding us, the pandemic, the social unrest. Uh, Father, there's so much that the devil is doing around us, trying to defeat us as a nation, trying to defeat us as individuals and even the world. And so, Lord, we're praying for your mighty intervention. Father, we're praying that even as we wait for your hands to work in these circumstances, that we would be found faithful in worship, that we would be found faithful in our praise time, that we would be faithful in our giving back to you a portion of what you have blessed us with. Father, as we study your word this evening, we ask your blessings, we ask for wisdom, insight and we pray oh lord that we will use this word to strengthen who we are and what we are and the task that we're to be about help us that our lives will be strong in christ's name amen we're going to sing the first the second and the last of amazing grace and then the first and last of grace greater than our sin you got the numbers on your paper there, Pastor.
Some of those names that were shared in the past week for special prayer request uh, was uh, Carter Douglas, uh, Robert Caudill, and Terry Isley, uh, Larry Ambonese, uh, Matthew Coker, uh, Lucy Wren, and Mary Lou Barrier, uh, Gail Beck, and Mike Carr. Frank Barker and Lucy Tysinger, uh, Emily Mann, uh, and we also uh, have not heard the results of Bill's test, but we, okay, we're just told that uh, Bill is still in remission, so praise report for that, and I uh, appreciate all the prayers for Bill as he was awaiting those results, so. Uh, good news, good news. Okay, and anyone else that have a yeah, family of Angie Swink? Yes. A P U T O. And Amy Taylor. Okay, yeah. Amy Taylor. Okay. All right, anybody else? If at home you happen to have some, you need to email them to the church or. Text them to my phone, but let us know if you have requests and you're at home listening. Uh, get those requests in here to us. So let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we again come to you to say thank you for uh, answers to prayer. Uh, we're especially thankful tonight to hear that from Bill's results that he is still in remission and we're thankful for that and we praise you for answering prayers we ask you father to continue being with others that are dealing with sicknesses and troubles of one sort or another we still have families that are dealing with death and we ask father your comfort on them and father again we ask tonight that uh, your wisdom would be imparted to us as we try to share your word and allow this word to speak to us as we study together. Father, let your holy will be done. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> I think the last time we were together in Acts chapter 28 that we were just about uh, about ready to uh, try to settle an argument and uh, there was an argument getting ready to take place uh, about whether or not the Apostle Paul had persuaded these people in Rome to accept uh, his teaching uh, from the prophets, from the law of Moses, uh, as he shared this Old Testament message with, with these people who were putting him on trial. Uh, and it says that uh, 
he spent uh, an extended period of time a day sharing with them this message concerning the kingdom of God. Uh, and when he finished, it said in verse 24 that some were persuaded by the things which were spoken and some did not believe. Uh, so when some believed, some did not believe, some accepted the message, some didn't accept the message, it said that the Jews departed and <clears throat> they had a dispute among themselves concerning those things that Paul had just uh, shared with them. And uh, what takes place at that point, uh, these Jews were not ready, uh, not ready to accept the message that Paul was given. Now, it said some believed, some accepted what he was saying. Does that mean they just believed the message? Does that mean that some claimed Christ? Uh, well, I would like to believe that because of Paul's testimony and Paul's witness that some did uh, receive Christ. However, the issue of Paul and the argument against Paul is still not settled. So what did Paul say to them? And the next words that are recorded uh, are words that are recorded in the book of Isaiah. And uh, the words that are recorded in Isaiah come from the sixth chapter, verses 9 and 10. And this is what Paul says. Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand. Seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. Their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. So what's Paul saying to these people? Folks, you need to know and understand that when I talk about the Holy Spirit, this is something that was talked about in the Old Testament, in the prophets, in a place that you know, in a place that you're supposed to understand. The work of the Holy Spirit was working during the time of the prophets as much as it is working today. And so as Paul shares concerning the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, you might be reminded of what was said in the first chapter of Acts at verse 16 when Paul said to those people, men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled. The Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. Was the Holy Spirit working in the Old Testament? Yes. Uh, and here Paul says, this is the same Holy Spirit that was working when David spoke concerning one who would betray the Messiah. This is the same Holy Spirit that was working at that time. So, Paul begins at this point to create a little bit of distance uh, from those that he had called my own people. Uh, if you look back at verse 19, uh, Paul kind of has a closeness here uh, as he talked with these people. Uh, 
He called them my own people. He called them my nation. Uh, and now he's going from addressing uh, my nation uh, to addressing these people concerning our fathers, our forefathers. Uh, and what Paul is doing as he puts a little distance between him and these Jews, uh, because these Jews that he is talking to are unbelieving Jews, he is sharing with them some words that Jesus also, also shared uh, from when he was talking about why he spoke in parables. Uh, Jesus also shared these same words uh, when he talked about uh, the prophets. Now, when Jesus was talking about why he spoke in parables, uh, in Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 13, <clears throat> Jesus says, Therefore I speak to them in parables because, exactly the same words that Isaiah the prophet spoke about as God revealed to him. Jesus said, I speak in parables because, Seeing they do not see, hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and will not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. The hearts of these people have grown dull, their ears of hard of hearing, their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should see them, or so that I should heal them. Very same words that the Apostle Paul has used, the very same words that Jesus used. Uh, the Apostle Luke, as he wrote uh, the book of Acts, uh, Luke also recorded the words of Jesus in chapter 8. Uh, and uh, again, the words of Isaiah. Uh, the disciples asked Jesus a simple question. Uh, what does this parable mean? Uh, and he had just given the parable of the sower. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Uh, so what's Jesus saying? We're trying to make the kingdom of God understandable. For these people. And so these words from the prophet are words that uh, Isaiah had shared uh, many, many years before. And this was Jesus' explanation to the disciples as to why he was speaking these parables. Just simply wanting the kingdom of God to be understood. In Isaiah chapter 43, uh, if we begin reading at verse 8, uh, these words are given to the prophet. And God says to the prophet, Bring out the blind people who have eyes and the deaf people who have ears, let all the nations be gathered together. Let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring out their witnesses that they may be justified. Or let them hear and say, it is truth. You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, 
and my servant whom I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared and saved, I have proclaimed, and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am am God. Indeed, before the day was, I am he, and there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work, and no one can reverse it. Paul understood the very stubborn attitude of these Jews that he was facing or had faced and was now trying to walk away from. We have a nation, God's chosen, and we have a nation with a very stubborn attitude. God's chosen, and they are so unwilling to receive God's redemptive plan. And God told the prophet Isaiah to call these people out and understand that God is the Savior for this nation and that they should understand his kingdom is one that cannot be debated, it cannot be reversed. God is the Lord God is the creator, and Israel is not ready to accept it. God tells the prophet Isaiah to reveal this to Israel so that it might also reveal their sinful condition. This is exactly what the apostle Paul was doing with the Jews that he was meeting. So he has given to them the word that God gave to the prophet and it seems that it has not changed anything. Verse 28, Paul says, Therefore let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and they will hear it. God's plan. For the Apostle Paul, get the message to the Gentiles. Now, you know, all the way through the book of Acts, as we have studied together, when the Apostle Paul would go into a city, where did he go first? To the synagogue. And when he left the synagogue and was out on the streets, he was ministering, testifying, witnessing to the Gentiles that he came in contact with after he left the synagogue. So Paul's message was always to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. But Paul says, let it be known to you, and he's speaking again to these Jews, let it be known to you that God's plan is to get his message of salvation to the Gentile people. You need to realize that in every city the Apostle Paul went to, he shared the gospel. But he started with the Jews in the synagogues and moved to the Gentiles in the same city. In Acts chapter 13, verse 46 Paul and Barnabas uh, were about their missionary journey. And it says in verse 46 that Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It is necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it, 
judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, now we're turning to the Gentiles. For the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. You, he's talking about Israel, he's talking about Jewish people, you, you yourselves, judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. And because you are not accepting this, then we turn to the Gentiles. Because God has said to us, I have sent you as a light to the Gentiles. And this is also echoed in chapter 18 at verse 6. The nation of Israel was not going to return not going to turn to the Messiah, not going to turn to Jesus, no matter how much the Apostle Paul pleaded for the nation to seek Christ. And it's not going to happen now until Jesus comes again. Second coming of Christ, uh, people are going to make that turn. Uh, but it seems, it seems that Paul has created a great divide among those Jews that were at his trial. Verse 29, and when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. What happens? There was division. The Jews could not reconcile it even within themselves. And so it seems that the Apostle Paul might be free. Verse 30, Paul dwelt two years, two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Well, we don't know just exactly what happened to Paul's case. Uh, it seems that Luke was more involved with recording church history than he was in recording the Apostle Paul's life at this point, but it seems, it seems that the Apostle Paul was released uh, to do ministry for a certain period of time. It is probably somewhere in the time period of about A.D. 63 to A.D. 65, somewhere in this period of time. Uh, and Paul was probably released because the Roman officials had not found anything uh, to do substantial charges against them. If you study the book of Romans, it seems that from this day, when Paul might have been released, not only did he do ministry and service in Rome, but there was also the possibility and the likelihood that he went to Spain. Uh, and if you look in the book of Philemon, the 22nd verse there, uh, Paul said that he was hopeful that he was going to be released. Uh, in Philippians, the first chapter, Paul said he had confidence that he was going to be released. Uh, not only leaving Rome and going to Spain, it tells us that there was the likelihood that he also went to the Isle of Crete during this period of time and ministered there. And since Rome seemed to be in no great big hurry to settle this, uh, 
Paul just continued where he was at for a period of time, uh, ministering to everyone that would come to him. This period of time, probably about two to three years. Studying the scriptures while Paul was here for this two or three years, uh, he penned the book of Ephesians, uh, the book of Philippians, the book of Colossians, and the book of Philemon while he was here in Rome. Uh, Tychicus, Onesimus, Epaphroditus, uh, these were some that had accompanied Paul on his missionary journey. Uh, they were likely, probably part of that crowd that came to uh, to be there with him. Uh, and so what it tells us as we look, verse 30 and 31, uh, what seems to happen next is that the Apostle Paul is released from Roman custody. In the eastern part of the Roman Empire, uh, it is recorded that Paul preached the gospel. Uh, as he wrote to the people in Rome uh, or wrote to the church in Rome uh, later on, uh, likely that he was in Spain at that time. Uh, so what takes place with the apostle Paul? The statute of limitations as such has run out for his trial. Uh, the statute of limitations allowed 18 months to convene another trial. However, the statute of limitations had run out. What happens? Instead of giving another trial for the same charges, Paul is arrested again. The period of time in which he was arrested was around A.D. 67. According to church history, Luke does not give us these details, but... Uh, Paul was arrested again. Charges were brought against the Apostle Paul. The Emperor Nero was the emperor that ordered the Apostle Paul to be beheaded. Uh, again, it seems that Luke recorded church history and not so much the biography of the Apostle Paul. Chances are Luke finished writing before all of this transpired with the Apostle Paul. Uh, so Paul was arrested again. His charges again were trumped up charges. Uh, Luke ends his writing by giving a note of victory concerning the Apostle Paul's preaching and teaching and that the apostle Paul was actually not bothered by the authorities during the time that he was preaching, teaching, and doing his missionary work just before his death. So Luke kind of ends on a tone of victory and the death of the apostle Paul comes uh, just a few years after uh, Luke closes this writing. So with the Apostle Paul being arrested the next time, uh, the charges were fixed. Uh, Nero made sure the Apostle Paul was beheaded, thinking that he would stop the spread of the gospel. And if anything, he probably added to the spread of the gospel rather than stopping the spread of the gospel. So this is 
a conclusion to the book of Acts. And sometime in the next few days, we're going to have to depend on some wisdom from someone as to where we study next. And it may be a good thing to pick up on some of those four letters that the Apostle Paul wrote while he was in Rome. So we'll consider some of these things, and if an idea comes to you, uh, shoot me a text and let me know, and we'll consider some of that as we prepare for our next study. So let's pray. Okay, uh, remember Tommy Byerly in your prayer. He is being dispatched with the Red Cross headed to uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana with the storms there. So please remember Tommy as he goes there and remember Stacy as she tries to keep things going here at home. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the strength and power of your word. We thank you, O oh Lord, for time to read, to study, to share, and to apply this word. We give thanks, O Lord, for your spirit, and we pray that your spirit will grant wisdom and understanding as we seek uh, the things that we need to do to share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we need your wisdom and your guidance. Help us, O oh Lord, I pray, to be effective in these troubling times. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen.